Okay, so I'm going to talk for the next few moments about uh, the Wi-Fi categorization and using that as a method for assessing the risk of major amputation and I think helping categorize wounds better in order to understand the contribution of ischemia, the size of the wound, and the extent of infection. So what is the Wi-Fi score? Well, the reality is if you look back at the original descriptions of critical limb ischemia, it was uh, meant at the time of uh, description to exclude patients with diabetes. The rationale for this was to focus on ischemia only as the etiology of non-healing arterial ulcers. However, I think we all recognize that the majority of patients with critical limb ischemia do have diabetes. In most series, uh, the percentage of patients with diabetes ranges between 50 and 70 percent. So as a result, um, it was felt that it would be good to reassess the factors that are associated with wound healing among patients with critical limb ischemia and to also be inclusive of patients with diabetes. So a few years ago, um, the Society for Vascular Surgery developed the Wound Ischemia Foot Infection Scoring System. The concept here was to create a system that's analogous to the TNM system that's used in cancer staging uh, with a score of 0 to 3 for each of these different uh, features. And uh, the way that this was developed uh, was using a Delphi consensus group of 12 members where the different potential combinations of the extent of the wound size, the severity of the ischemia, and the extent of foot infection were uh, used to create um, a perceived uh, risk categorization, categorization among patients with critical limb ischemia, not much different from the way, for example, AUC criteria are developed. And I think importantly what this has done is helped refocus CLI outcomes on more than just ischemia. So let's go through each of the three definitions uh, to understand uh, what they entail. So with regards to wound size, this is rated zero to three, zero being no ulcer, and three, the most extreme version, being extensive bone, joint, or tendon involvement, uh, and in the setting of gangrene, extensive involving the forefoot or midfoot or rear foot. So here are some examples uh, of that. This is considered a, a Wi-Fi score one. These are small, relatively shallow, shallow ulcers. Uh, this is a wound size two. This involves the tips of the toes uh, with some gangrene, uh, but can likely also be salvaged with a TMA with appropriate uh, revascularization of underlying ischemia. And these are examples of wound size three. Uh, there's extensive involvement of the deep tissue and tendons uh, in these cases. And here, one of the hardest types of wounds to heal, extensive deep uh, plantar uh, surface at the heel. So this is by no means a perfect system. This is meant to be a kind of general categorization, uh, but I think it does give some idea of the size of the wound that matters for the scoring. With regards to the severity of ischemia, this is also graded zero to three. Uh, with ABI values as well as ankle systolic pressures and toe pressure and TCPO2 values that are given as a guide. It's unclear uh, with the ischemia classification which of these should be used such that if you have an ABI that's discordant with a toe pressure, exactly how you should grade the ischemia. And I think importantly, this also does not take into account many other factors that we know contribute to the extent of wound healing uh, and oxygenation, including the angiosome uh, of the artery that supplies the wound, and in addition, the patency of the pedal arch, which is uh, clearly an important determiner, determinant of wound healing. With regards to foot infection, uh, the scoring from zero to three uh, ranges from no evidence of infection uh, to local infection, local infection with deeper tissues with periwound erythema, and severe being local infection with evidence of systemic inflammatory response, such as uh, um, essentially uh, impending sepsis. So this is what these Wi-Fi combinations look like uh, and has been provided as a guide for the risk categorization of the scoring system. You can see here the wound is scored zero to three. We've got ischemia zero to three here, and then we have the extent of the foot infection. And this basically has created a risk matrix that is coded here green, yellow, orange, and red, representing very low, low, medium, and, high, and perceived high risk for major amputation. And this is what was developed uh, via the Delphi consensus group. So they basically did an assessment of all 64 possible combinations based on the perceived one-year risk of major amputation. And uh, as is apparent here from the color coding, this creates four major categories of the very low, low, moderate, and high with all these different combinations. I would note that there are more combinations that can result in a stage four or high risk uh, wound, and there are fewer combinations that can result in very low perceived risk.
But I think that these four categories do help because they create an opportunity for then looking at uh, outcomes and risk categorization based on the combination of these factors. So uh, one of the first papers looking at this, because the Wi-Fi score was actually developed without any uh, validation of it uh, actually being associated with outcomes, was an early validation performed by Cull et al. among 139 patients with CLI. The median time to wound healing was 2.7 months, and they investigated the association of the Wi-Fi score with risk of one-year major amputation. And you can see here that uh, what they found was that if stage one, two, three, and four, the predicted outcome based on the Delphi consensus group would have been major amputation rates of 3, 8, 25, and 50 percent. And their observed outcome was relatively uh, similar to that, 3, 10, 23, and 40 percent. So there was definitely an association between these categories of the Wi-Fi staging and the risk of major amputation. There also was an association with a lack of wound healing as well. Uh, the Wi-Fi score has also been validated in non-diabetic patients undergoing endovascular intervention. This particular study published last year uh, investigated 126 non-diabetic patients. You can see that the percentage of patients in each group was relatively similar, suggesting that these four categories do also help represent the spectrum of CLI. And uh, interestingly, in that cohort of non-diabetic patients, they suggested that the outcomes and the risk of amputation were relatively similar among categories one, two, and three, and it was really group four that had, had the very high risk of major amputation, suggesting potentially in the non-diabetic patient that it's really these patients with the very large wound, for example, or concomitant infection as well, who may be really driving this risk. This has also been looked at uh, specifically in infrapopliteal interventions for critical limb ischemia using one of the largest uh, single center databases we have of critical limb ischemia. This included 596 limbs and 77% were diabetic, 23% with chronic kidney disease. And they actually chose to look at the composite score. Instead of looking at the four different categories, they looked at the absolute number of the Wi-Fi staging and found that if you dichotomize, there was an association with a lower score uh, with a freedom from amputation of 85% out to three years as opposed to 70%. This was also true of re-intervention, amputation, and re -stenosis. In comparison, one of the most recent publications actually looked at a multidisciplinary diabetic foot ulcer clinic and examined the outcomes of wound healing and major amputation and in that group, it was found that there was some association between these Wi-Fi staging, stage one, two, three, and four, with the time to wound healing, such that stage four had uh, the longest time to wound healing, but there was no association with the risk of major amputation. You'll see here that because this was a multidisciplinary clinic where I think there was a lot of effort at limb salvage, the rates of major amputation were also very low. They were around 5%. So in conclusion, the Wi-Fi score is a useful method for classifying amputation risk in critical limb ischemia. I think it does help emphasize the concomitant contribution of wound size and infection on outcomes uh, and to help keep in mind that revascularization alone is not always going to be the major determinant of outcomes. However, it does have limitations. Um, the likelihood of a successful digit amputation or TMA is not part of that staging system. And it also misses measures of local perfusion. As I mentioned, the uh, angiosome that's uh, supplied as well as the, um, the uh, pedal arch patency. And the reality is that there are other very important risk factors for major amputation that drive these outcomes that include critical uh, chronic kidney disease, dialysis, and insulin-dependent diabetes. So I think the Wi-Fi score, while I think it does help uh, classify based on these physical findings, uh, is one part of the overall risk spectrum among patients with critical limb ischemia. Thank you. Thanks, <laughs>